is amazing. I've never planted a crop myself. And look at this, we got rows of corn coming up. I wasn't for sure when we were planting if little Max was actually doing anything. I know I had put seed in the ground, but I didn't know what was gonna come up. But look at this, guys, green rows all around me. So guys, right here is the remnants of after the hailstorm that just came through. It's June 16th, and so we had a storm blow through here. Um, you can probably see off or hear off in the distance, thunder. You can see the clouds. Uh, but yeah, so that is on its way out right now. But yeah, this is the hail that we had um, that came through. And uh, yeah, like I said, it had some hail damage that we'll definitely have to figure out what happened to the crop. Beans are probably gonna have to be replanted. Corn might be delayed enough in the season that we may not be able to replant. So I don't know, we'll have to see uh, what the crop insurance, I guess that's why we carry insurance, but not sure exactly what that's gonna cover. Uh, but yeah, that's where it's at right now is Hailstorm. All right, so we are day one of planting, but if you wanna see what uh, about probably $200 looks like sitting on the ground, I had one of my bags spill open on me. I caught it when I was filling up the box. My bag with 80,000 seeds, there's a whole plethora of them right here, and I'm not gonna be able to get them all picked up because I don't want this grass and stuff going through my meters. So guys, this right here is what uh, it looks like. This was potential. We're gonna get most of it out, as much as we can, clean put it in the boxes and use it, but there will be some that are still here. So this will probably be my best yielding area right here. So the planter's not quite heavy enough to get into the ground, the toolbar. Most planters are gonna have markers and they're gonna have draw bars and they're gonna have all sorts of, th or hitches, I should say. We don't have that and there's no downforce on the three point. So we're having to add um, external downforce. Uh, brother four row um, ended up having some weights that were on a tractor of his that he did not need right now. So we are borrowing those and we're gonna go ahead and put these as outside. My little John Deere weights that I had uh, for a little for Johnny, which was a little 1025R, just didn't cut it. It didn't give us enough down pressure. So we're gonna put a thousand pounds. This is 500 pounds right here. Um, we're gonna have to drive the Kubota next to the tractor the whole time through the field. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna build a bracket to get this extra weight on here. And this hopefully will give us enough down pressure of what we're going to do. So now we got to go to the other side and over here, let's go over here and show you what, where we're putting it. So if you look right here, there's a space from this row unit to out here. This is where we're putting those weights and having them up in the air to uh, kind of put this out here. Ideally, we would have a weight bracket that we could hang off here. Uh, but since we are uh, should have had this done a month ago, uh, we're kind of just patching it together to fix it for next year is what we're going to be doing the right way. Uh, but right now we're going to try to make it so we can get it in the ground and get it to put the seed where it needs to be. So guys, I just got off the phone with the individuals down at Deep Sand Technology. I can't say anything but good things about the, their customer service. It's all been user error that I've been running into. Um, it's not anything to deal with the technology aspect of it. It's more so just me not, I thought at one point I could outsmart the system and do things like that. and they've been great to deal with. They're helping me get workarounds from the standpoint of my field's a little bit irregularly shaped, but the system still works in that, that size shape or that shape of field. So I have kind of a V shape as my field um, overall, and it makes it a little bit difficult from getting a line around it, um, but we got a workaround and it helps doing that. But if you have a big square field, it's gonna be no problem. It's even no problem in this aspect. But yeah, this right here is the brain center of what's going on. And the only wire, I mean, there's no wires plugged into it uh, right here. It's all based in this tablet. And um, it's really intuitive. I'm not like that uh, techie of a person, but it's been very intuitive to be able to figure this stuff out. Granted, it helps that I do have a junior four row that's kind of been helping me on some of the stuff, but uh, we were able to get it. We kind of got everything buttoned up. Mrs. Forward, do you want to show kind of how we got things buttoned up here? So where we got here, down here, we've got all the cables in that box right there, um, just to kind of keep everything nice and tidy right there. 
Eventually this will go back behind the dash, but for this right now, we got it zip tied to my adjustment lever. We got it run down there. Power is coming from that source right there. And this right here is the steering wheel. And this is the FJ Dynamic steering wheel. Like I said, the connection that had to go down here. But honestly, there's only about three, four wires. The wire that goes here, this wire right here comes over and runs your on and off for your GPS. And then the tablet right here has a power source on the side here. And then you have a cable right here that runs up to your globe. So it's really simple wiring. The whole wiring harness was labeled. Um, you just connected the points. We had a wire, oh, there's one more wire, sorry. One more wire coming from the steering sensor up there on the right front tire coming along and we ran it through the door right here. Guys, catastrophe on Little Max. Look what happened. Is it me? Is it Ma Little Max, the Massey? I don't know. Maybe it's my sweatpants. Maybe it's my gray sweatshirt I wear all the time. I don't know. I went to lift up. This thing just ripped right out of the frame. Have a welder coming to fix it. Look at holes. All right, guys, we are switching Little Max from corn to beans. It's not a hard process. And I've only got four rows to do. I'm on my last row right now, so let's come along over here what we're doing. What we have is the seed box, and this is the meter system right here for the product that I'm trying to plant. But right here, I take this little strap off, I flip this open, right here is my corn meter. So what's happening is vacuum's getting pulled across this plate and pulling seed into here. Brings it up around and drops it down into my seed tube where closing wheels have good soil to seed contact. Ends up being, switching it over from beans. This is my bean plate. I'm gonna be putting that in here. This is a corn singulator. I had to go ahead and lock that down so it can't singulate things. Had to flip this little spring here. Had to bring a brush from here to here. And now, put that on. Close this door. And magic, we're doing beans. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. We are right now getting ready to load Little Max with the seed tender right here that my seed dealers let me use. So this is full of beans right here. Um, this should be all the beans that I need. I don't know, it's like a little Sputnik. I'm calling it Sputnik because look at this little satellite thing that I'm using right here. But we're gonna use that. It's got a gas motor on it that will allow us to put the beans that are in here into the boxes and then we will be able to start getting our beans in. Corn is in, it's coming up little sprouts, but as you can see, ooh, ooh, overcast today. It's been raining, trying to beat some rain. So we're gonna try to get some beans in the ground, get the planter set. Um, so that is what we're working on. Sputnik, putting beans into little Max. Sassy Massey, pulling. Nothing can go wrong, perfect. Satellites drive. Bad news on the four row farm front. Right here is what my corn currently looks like. Not what it should be looking like. It was looking really, really good. Um, you can see the remnants over my shoulder here of a storm that came through that had rain, blessing of that, but it also had the frozen rain known as hail and it kind of uh, did some damage, uh, quite a bit of damage here to the corn, um, to the point of that I had to call the crop insurance agent. They're coming out to look at it. My beans, they're probably gonna have to be replanted, uh, which is extra cost, um, all of that stuff. The storm came through, brought some straight line winds, neighboring uh, places lost a shed. There was some high line poles, like eight in a row that were completely toppled over. The place down here to the south had some trees decimated. There's pivots tipped over. Um, but the big thing out of all of it was the hail. The hail came through and like I said, definitely shredded things um, that were actually looking very good. Uh, so yeah, we'll have to see what the next step is for this. But right now, um, all we can do is wait. We don't know what it's gonna look like. Um, 
It may grow some out of it, but it's still gonna be hurt that yield potential that we were hoping for when we planted it. Uh, little Max did a great job. Massey did a great job. Um, not a great job for the hail. So we will give that a thumbs down. A one out of five star on the hail, because it brought some rain. We're gonna definitely have to replant our beans. So I am gonna be using the auto steer again. We got little Max hooked back up. Uh, he is ready to go. I didn't really clean him out because I was gonna have to do some replant anyway. Um, it looked, looked like I had some areas that didn't come up that well. So we're gonna be replanting the whole 80 acres is about what it ends up being. And so I'm just using my FJ dynamic system here to, uh, to do that. I just went in and created a new task. And with that, it allowed me to carry over my guidance lines from the last task of the last time I did it. That way when I'm done, I can tell the crop insurance exactly how many acres I planted using my old guidance lines and then kind of just angling those off a little bit. This right here is the piece that was beans last time. You can see from my field there, that's what I drew. Um, here's my guidance lines that I used. This is my north and south, south boundary. I call this the creek boundary and then the north boundary. Those are my different guidance lines that I used to do the whole field. Um, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back here to the field, we're gonna hit west, and then I'm gonna go in here to task. And so right now I'm starting a new one called replant. And so that will be where we're gonna be and I'll bring my guidance lines in and then I can click on which guidance line I want. Um, so I can use my north, my south, my creek, and I can use these as my baseline. So when I end up doing it. So what I'm probably gonna do is use my north, south, start over here and start filling in this area and then move this way. So that is the nice thing about the FJ dynamics. I can come anywhere in this map and start drawing these lines out. So that is what the plan is right now is we're gonna come over here, fill in. This gets to be a wet spot if we get some rain, um, but that is where we're gonna start filling from here and come this way and we're gonna start planting today.